producer Steve Salary put this together. And it's a fan game show. If you are a pop culture nerd, you think you could slay everyone else in this. It's going to happen Thursday, April 20th at the Agora. Play Last Fan Standing. Watch some groovy Bruce movies. All the info is at agoracleveland.com. If you want to go, I got two tickets for you for Bruce O'Rama, April 20th at the Agora. Call 10, good luck. 216 578 1007 or 800 348 1007. The words radio and Ohio both end in I-O. And I-O is one of the moons of Jupiter. Have fun trying to figure out whatever the f*** that means. I-O, I-O, it's the Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Yes, I heard when you die after burial. You have to come back as an insect or animal. Yes, I heard when you die after burial, you have to come back as an insect or animal. Well, if this so, I don't want to be a monkey, either a goat, a sheep, or donkey. My brother said he wants to come back a hog, but not wrongy. I want to be a bed bug just because I'm going to bite them young ladies' bumper, or like a hot dog or a hamburger. And if you know your thing, don't be in a fright. It's only big fat woman I'm going to bite. <laughs> Northeast Ohio is making amazing strides on this annual bed bug list that comes along, right? In that, we are going up on the list. Woohoo! Uh, for the umpteenth year in a row, the uh, city of Chicago, the most beautiful city on the face of the planet, uh, is number one for bed bugs. But Cleveland, Akron, Ohio jumps for spaces, for spaces, for spaces. We are now the fourth most bed buggy area in the entire country. Look at us. We're only only New York and Philadelphia <laughs> are more bed buggy <laughs> than us. Paul Rudd. Mm-hmm. Look at us. And congratulations, by the way, to the fine people of Youngstown, Ohio, who jumped way up on the list. Youngstown climbed 10 spots to number 27. But uh, every year they do eh, the top 50, I guess. They get this data from Orkin and these pest removal companies. And uh, seven cities from the state of Ohio are in the top 50, with Cleveland and Akron solidly at number four. We got more bed bugs than L.A. Oh, we got boy. more than Detroit. Come on. You've heard we're not Detroit? You're right. We got more bed bugs. We got more than Indianapolis. We got more than D.C. Way more than Columbus. This is making me itchy. I hate this. <laughs> Dayton is down two spots. We are, uh, we're way up. Good job, Dayton. So, listen, um, you know, L.A. had a big jump, but we still have more than they do. Miami dropped. Toledo fell seven spots to number 38. So for people who pay attention uh, to things like bed bugs, and I hope that you do, you know, whether or not your place is prone to them or, you know, somebody like Mary who travels a lot. It's it's always in the back of your mind. Even if you don't travel a lot, anytime you do travel, I hope one of the first things you do is you lift up that mattress. Yes. And you check to see if there are any marks. First, you, Every pull, time. you rip the comforter off the bed, um, and then you uh, lift the mattress up. And hopefully you don't find anything. What was your question as we went to break, Cody? <clears throat> is he on the phone? He's just taking a Sorry, time. I was on the phone. What was your question? That's okay. I, I said, what was your question as we went to break? Uh, so do I have do I have a reason to fill a ways about what happened? It, it well, might be people, it might li- ridiculous. Listeners were telling me that that you're offended by a hypothetical situation that might have never happened. This is the kind of thing that would pit Mary and her boyfriend head to head against each other. <laughs> it's our biggest fight. A hypothetical situation. <laughs> um but- but it wasn't necessarily hypothetical, though. But but you didn't know they were together, and they weren't doing anything to you with they that. Weren't, so it wasn't done in malice, but I, all all they had to do, like, all, just not even both of them, one of them say, hey, you know, I, they probably don't know that they hooked up with me. They, they both hooked up with me. Right. But one of them could have had the decency to just be like, hey, I'm with, so I'm in a, not even who you're with, I'm in a relationship right now. But are they? Who? They are said they they're in a relationship with each other? Yeah, they have said that. 
No, I saw them kissing on New Year's Eve. But is that a relationship? Yes, a lot it, of people it, I, don't change their Facebook status. I went if you to their go- page and it said in a relationship. I see. And it was just like new new beginnings, blah, 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 kissing. Yep. With, and I'm like, oh. Right, but so, just because they didn't tell you, you still know. I know now. I know that because. So think, you're mad about how you found out? I think out? he's just heard about being ghosted by both of them. Being ghosted sucks no matter what when it happens twice at once. And the thing is, we were but these I were hookups. These weren't people you dated. But they right. were friends. But there's also friends with benefits. I had the benefits, but we were also friends. It was like people. Right, that but you everybody see. knows that the friends with benefit thing is more heavily weighted on the benefits end. Correct, but right. like I wasn't. I, I'm not just a throwaway people person re- because we were messing around. Well, Seems like say, you were. I'm not, I'm not saying that. He's saying that they are not gonna. So why not mention this to them? Hey, I don't want to lose you guys as friends, but nobody told me. Maybe they don't even know. Maybe they're like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I get being upset because you feel slighted or you feel like, oh, don't even have the decency to say, hey, I have a boyfriend. I understand that part of it. But I also feel like you, in your pound cake brain, created a scenario where you texted both these guys and they were laying in bed together. I absolutely And they did. were like, hee, hee, hee. I what a absolutely loser. Did. I absolutely don't ever did. text him back. Oh, we're in love. Screw that guy. What a... What a bald loser or whatever you, your head comes up with. I absolutely did. And that I, didn't I, happen. I created that scenario because, it, but but because it, it's, it's a mistake in my mind because it wasn't too, they weren't too far apart. I messaged a person um, and I was like, okay, I'll give them time to respond again. I mean, I, I have an internal clock. I'm, I'm like, I'll give them time to respond. And I think I was going around my house or just like watching a movie or something. And I was like, damn, really didn't reply. Okay, I'll see what the other one's doing. And then I text that person. And when did the same thing. Went about my day and no reply. And I'm like, they, but they don't owe you an explanation. They don't, but I want one. I see. <laughs> okay, well, they don't, but I, I want one. I and was just trying to get to that. I was trying to figure out where you were coming I from. I want one. Okay. I want one. It's not well, them. Then, it's a me thing. I want one. Right, but you. I gave have my body one, to these people. But yeah, you have yeah, one now. What other explanation is there? They're together. He wants the explanation from them. I just feel about away. what. I don't know. But you want them to explain what? You, you couldn't reply. You was too cute. You was too cute and laid up with your boo to just say, they go, I had a boyfriend. S- s- yeah, sorry. If I, I didn't. I didn't. If I had a boyfriend. I, and maybe they're keeping the door open. Okay. Maybe. They want to threesome. Maybe, maybe they did have maybe that very, but Maybe mm-hmm. very quietly. <clears throat> your pull is so strong. Your manly musk with these, t- with these two. And uh, what if this blew up their plans for a threesome? They were keeping it on the low because they were like, don't say anything. We're going to get – it'll be a big surprise to celebrate his weight loss. <laughs> They're like a surprise. Now something. that you're not a whale anymore, now we, we have our door open. Right. Hmm. The three of us are still under 300 pounds. Yeah, that's what they – I'm sure. Okay. People give me a hard time and say that I must be impossible to date. I, I feel like – can I pass that torch to Cody? I call Brian. I no, mean, you guys can both be impossible to do. I'm not impossible. I feel like he. He's a very special man. He's coming up with a lot of what ifs. Yeah, that's how an anxious brain works. I guess. Well, yeah, he's it, got an answer for everything. Well, no, I don't have an answer for everything. I. Oh, damn, I was about to give an answer for that. <laughs> See? <laughs> All don't right, tell, I'm, don't I'm tell me I'm up. wrong. I'm going to just shut up. Don't then. tell me I'm wrong. Let me give you some money here. Ain't wrong about that. Maybe you need to pay for a bed bug infestation. Yeah, Whatever. Yeah. Here's a thousand bucks. Do with it whatever you need to do. You can go fund yourself. Good luck. The buzzard wants you to go fund yourself and score one thousand dollars. Enter the nationwide keyword credit at wmms.com. That's credit. Enter it now at wmms.com. And good luck from Buzzard Radio. You want to hear from Jenna? Always. Mm-hmm. It's time for Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. You know what I'm all of a sudden wondering? How come when the retard gave me a CD without a CD case, it works fine? This has been Sweet Nothings with Jenna from Poland. She's really leaning into the R word, huh? It makes my head hurt. She really gets her point across, doesn't Mm -hmm. she? Yeah, concise? That's how an anxious brain works. You ain't got nothing on her, Cody. How's that Kushner book? I started it. I did the... Uh, the forward. And so you go live. 
I, I did not go live. Crap. I actually forgot. I did record like seven minutes of me reading, but I, <laughs> what? Seven minutes. I wow. Well done. Do it. No, I have it. And it, I, but the only thing is I don't like it. Not because I mispronounce words. That's not, I always do that, but I just couldn't focus on the book because I kept making sure that it was recording and the sound was good. But like I have it and it's just not great. So you hear that? Yeah, let me hear. Let me hear some of you reading the book. That's my fan. Why wouldn't you turn the fan off? So I'm just gonna read the preface of my new Jared Kushner book, gifted to me by Mary Santora. Boop, boop. It's called Breaking History: A White House Memoir. My story. <laughs> my truth. My truth. My truth. Oh, my. Preface. <laughs> I never planned to write a book, but then again, I never planned to work in the White House. As time and as my time in government was coming to an end, several friends encouraged me to record my memories while they were still fresh. After years of nonstop action, I paused long enough to see the pan- panorama of all I experienced inside of the most consequential presidencies. While I thought this was a chapter of my life was closing, I realized that my service would not be complete until I captured this history. The story that follows is not your typical White House memoir. Because mine is not typical. Mine is not the typical Washington experience. My untraditional role as senior advisor to a unique president made for my journey that would be hard for a writer to script if it wasn't true. When Donald J. Trump announced his candidacy, I had no intention of getting involved in his campaign. Before long, however, I met men and women across the country who felt like Trump was finally giving them the voice and they inspired me to play a bigger role than I had ever expected. Why are you so stop-start when you're reading this? Ivanka and I left behind our lives in New York and moved to Washington with our three young children. I've been calling them. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't want to do it. <laughs> what, do you think we were going to be like, hey, you did a great job? Oh, yeah, yeah, why are you so stop-start? <laughs> it's like a third grader reading the... That's why I, I read. That's how I read out loud. I think it's just as fast as his finger could move. And you had to go down to the next line. Actually, I was reading a, or watching a video about reading faster. It's good to use your finger so you can you can actually read faster. Hmm. I didn't want to skim. I was trying to also soak in what he was saying. Well, yeah, no, nobody's saying you have to read fast. I mean, you're, I think your pacing is fine. I mean, you sound more calm or whatever, but I, you sound like you're, like, getting tripped up all the time. I, well, I was because I was losing my place because there was a lot of compound words. And, I, and then it was like it would be at the end of the page and then – at the other one, and I would forget what what line I was. So, yeah, I was getting tripped up. But the investigations. The so how many decisions. pages did you get in? I don't want to hear the whole thing, but how many pages did you get in seven minutes? Uh, this is the whole. Oh, you read the whole preface? Yeah. How many pages is that? Like five, I think. I don't remember exactly, but. It, it took you a minute a page? I'm a slow reader. Yeah, I can only read about 45 pages an hour. I'm a, I'm a slow reader. I don't. I don't remember exactly what it was, but it, it was something like that, like five or seven pages. It wasn't. It wasn't too much, but um, I didn't want to have it sit there and read the whole half hour reading out loud because it was like at midnight, and my roommate was like, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> like reading Pancake out loud. Pancake Story Corner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, he just meant reading. <laughs> that too. <laughs> right. He's like, what? Huh? I don't you didn't even to, read the lease. I don't want him to be afraid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. T- tenant <laughs> agrees to. Wow. Tenant's here. I don't. I don't want any ants. <laughs> hey, we jump four I'll spaces take ten in bed ants bugs. over bed bugs. You know, that's right. Slumlord. Slumlord. He left me with ten ants. Yeah. Slumlord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, at least you. Um. Uh. That was a gotcha question when I said, "How's that Kushner right. book?" He started to read it. And he came with content. Under (laughs) duress, yes. It's already interesting because he essentially, I I didn't realize, I didn't know that story of his dad (laughs) extorting his brother. (laughs) You didn't know all about Jared Kushner's dad? The the whole family are scumbags. I I knew that Chris Christie was the guy who prosecuted Jared Kushner's dad, but I never knew what his dad was prosecuted for. Oh, Charles Kushner is a scumbag. Yeah, they were rich guys, so I figured it had, of course, it had something to do with money, but it just, because I, I knew the story about when uh, Donald Trump was looking for a running mate. Uh, Chris Christie had his hopes up, and Jared Kushner put the kibosh on that. Yes, he, and he said he prosecuted my dad. That's like, why yeah. Kushner fits in so well in that Trump crime family because that's what he knows. 
is that kind of growing up. That's what he <laughs> That's knows. That's so sad. He bought a prostitute for his brother. It was going to, and not going to film him. He did film him. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so it started out good. When you have these families, you know, we finished that Bernie Madoff documentary last night. And it's only I think it's only four or five episodes. But this guy destroyed everything he touched. He destroyed his own family. His one son committed suicide, hanged himself with his two-year-old daughter in the other room. His other son, uh, his cancer came back and he ended up dying of lymphoma or something. His wife was like living in her car for a minute, and he destroyed the, the 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 life savings of thousands of people. And Bernie Madoff himself is dead now, but it's just why. And the straight face the whole time. Once these guys get caught, they're like, "Yeah." And then I did this, and we had a whole thing, and you know, I just had kind of had to keep it going, and because they're sociopaths. So yeah. The how I bet he doesn't go too deeply in the Kushner thing though. I bet it's wah wah wah. And, uh, Chris Christie was a dick to my dad. He said because Kushner is still like uh, pissed about how his dad was treated. His dad's a criminal. He sets it up as his his sib- his dad's siblings, his uncles were bullying his dad, and he were feeling he was feeling pressure to keep them wealthy their entire lives, yeah. and they were ungrateful. So he was like, "I'm gonna get revenge." It was. His dad felt like he had to get revenge, and it was petty, but not a mistake that he should be locked up for for the rest of his life. That's why. Uh, well, yeah, of course, none of these like white Is his collar dad out. By the way, I think so. None of these white collar criminals ever think they should be punished for anything, you know. But that's why it was so. Like, you know who Carly Kloss is? She's she was a Victoria's Secret model years ago, but she's married to Kushner's brother, Ooh. and she was not quiet about the fact that she was not down what, with what was going on in the White House, and they're always like. Hey, could you shut your sister-in-law up? And they were trying to get Ivanka to talk to her. She's like, no. You guys are all criminals. Get out of my face. I mean, her, his brother is a lot wealthier than Jared is. Jared, his brother's hotter and richer. So I can only imagine he's even more scummy. Well, I don't know about that, but I mean. What's his brother's name? Joshua Kushner. Josh Kushner. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he's like a hedge fund guy or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with hedge funds. His last name is Kush. Nur. Yeah, his brother owns the Memphis Grizzlies, I think, or he he's, he owns some team, or because that's a move. When you have enough money, you go well. Now I have to have a sports team, like because that's real influence in the United States. Is when you're in professional sports, when you own a team or even just part of a team, they're like, oh, you made it now, boy. But no wonder Trump had like endless like assets. Like the dude was probably like a big donor. He's he's gonna support his brother over politics, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, who's doing the raping? I got to take a break. Uh, if you want to text for anything, three, five, w- congratulations on the book, by the way. Thank you. I'm glad you started it. Like it. Um, Should we make a bet when he finishes it? No. No. Nope. <laughs> I mean, you got, feel free to discuss amongst yourselves. I mean, but, I'm uh, taking the over. <laughs> which is what? Um, we'll, we'll go. Six months. <laughs> Next Christmas. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm still taking you over. Uh, if you want to text me, 35192, I'll see them there. You can um, leave messages on the iHeartRadio app, and we'll take a break and be back. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7. WMMS.